Please rise, let us begin our Thursday service of February 14, 2021 with silent prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Everything that has breath shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our responsive reading will be number 7, Psalm 16. Let's all read this responsibly. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom all is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Amen. Let us all pray. Dear loving Father God, we thank you so much. That on this day, already one entire month has gone by in this year. And we are here now before you on the second week of February, on this Lord's Day. And we are here before you in this time of worship, where we are able to come before you once again. Where from this world that was full of darkness and of evil, we thank you for this time of grace to be able to meet with you. There's this great and terrifying pandemic in this world. And though this is the world that we are living in currently, Father God, we believe that you have put us inside of your grasp, inside of your bosom. And you have given us the protections so that we will not uh, find danger, find any pain. Lord, we believe that you will guide us. This entire world is experiencing this global pandemic. And Lord, may you completely eradicate this virus in just one soup. May there be a new path where we are able to stay before you, stand before you, filled with uh, as we are next to each other, hand in hand in fellowship. Lord, at this time, we ask that your Lord, you have entrusted this word of the history redemption, the word of the blood of Jesus Christ upon our church. Lord, may we take this word and go forth to countless souls and to preach this word. May we be used as the church that grants life. O 
Lord, may there be no obstacles that can stand before us that prevents us from proclaiming your word. May you open up that path of evangelism. And may there be nothing stopping us as we march on forward with strength. When you tell us, go here, may we go there. May we be this type of church of hope. Currently, we are unable to gather together. And we are all in our own homes with the families giving you worship like this. Father God, all of our hopes, all of our problems, Lord, you already know all of these things. So Lord, may you, during this time of worship, may your hand of healing be upon us. May it liberate us from all of the problems that we may experience. May we be used for your will, for your works. May we stand up in the future and march on forward with strength. Especially starting from this Wednesday, it begins our uh, time of Lent. A time where we are able to partake fully of the passions, the sufferings of Christ. Now in our hearts that have been oppressed by this world, Lord, may we find liberation from this. May there be a work of repentance and renewal. Help us to experience these types of works during the Lent of this year. And on Easter, the day that our Lord resurrected, may our faiths resurrect. May we no longer suffer from the same problems of this world. May we be turned into the new human, new person. At this time, as the word is proclaimed, may your Holy Spirit be here with us. And may this word be, upon, uh, be planted upon each and every one of our hearts. And may, there be an ama- may it be this type of a word of light where it shines away all darkness. Currently, there's many hands that have come together uh, for their devotion in the creation of this video worship. Lord, may you remember all of their efforts and may you bless them greatly and may you pour upon your grace. From the beginning until the end of this worship, Lord, may you receive all of the glory. We pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ with sincerity. Amen. Our bread of life is from Romans 8, verses 17 through 18. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if we indeed, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. This is the word of God. Amen. Our title today is In Order to Have a Complete Lent, and with this I pray you will receive much grace. This Wednesday, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday, which begins our 2021 year of Lent. As an old proverb says, the beginning is only half the battle. Depending on how we treat this first day of Lent, it will be a major factor as to whether this Lent will be pleasing to the Lord or not. Through this word today, let us learn how we can commemorate Lent this year to please God. The meaning of Lent. Lent in Greek is tesselkost. It is a 40 day commemoration in which there is a 40 day period of remembrance partaking in the Lord's afflictions and sufferings. Lent begins on the 17th Ash Wednesday and extends 40 days to Saturday, April 3rd, the day before Easter. The 40 days are counted with the omission of every Sunday. 
The origin of Lent is as follows. The commemoration of Lent originated from the days of the early church when believers prepared a sacrament to, com to commemorate the flesh and blood of the Lord as they fasted and remembered the sufferings of Christ. Lent is a word derived from the ancient Anglo-Saxon word lang, which means spring. It is also a combination of the word, German word lentz. The first time Lent was dedicated as a 40-day celebration was in 325 AD at the Nisaya Conference where early Christians gathered. The beginning of Lent is always on a Wednesday. On this day, people sit on a floor of ashes and repent by pouring ashes over their head. That is why this first day of Lent is called Ash Wednesday or Holy Wednesday. Luke 10 verse 13 says, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, which occurred in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. This verse tells us that sitting in ashes symbolizes repentance. It is also found in Job 42, verse 6. Therefore I retract, and I repent in dust and ashes. During this period, people refrain from drinking alcohol, eating meat, and enjoying the entertainment and luxuries around them. And they use this as an opportunity to self-observe and self-abstain from committing additional sins in this world while thoroughly repenting of the sins they have committed. I believe this will be a special Lent due to the ongoing severity of this pandemic that is affecting the entire world. This is a time to deeply reflect upon our lives and our nation that we live in and pray earnestly for forgiveness of our sins. In the name of the Lord, I sincerely pray that we will be protected from all disasters. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. As we live in reverence to God, what is the attitude we must have in order to keep a perfect Lent? Number one, we must understand the meaning behind the 40 days of Lent. The number 40 is derived from 4 times 10. It is a combination of the numbers 4 and 10. The number 4 is a number of this world, which points to this fallen and cursed land. There's also the cardinal, cardinal directions, north, east, east, south, and west. And the number 10 is the number of fulfillment or completion. It is a number of completion of the history of redemption. In other words, the number 40 refers to the period of preparation and training needed to overcome this fallen world and fulfill our new redemptive missions. Therefore, if you look at the number 40 in certain periods recorded in the Bible, they contain the meaning of repentance and renewal. Small number one, during the flood judgment in Noah's time, the period of rain that fell on the sinful land was 40 days. Genesis 7, 11, through 12 records in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month on the 17th day of the month on the same day all the fountains of the great deep burst open 
and the floodgates of the sky were open, and the rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights. Then after this, Noah became the second ancestor of mankind after enduring the flood rains that came upon the earth for 40 days while he was in the ark. Small number two. Moses was trained in the wilderness of Midian for 40 years before receiving the mission of the Exodus. Acts 7 verse 30 says, And after 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in the flame of a burning thorn bush. After his 40 year training, Moses became the leader of the Exodus. Afterwards, in the wilderness of Sinai, through fasting and praying for 40 days, and then fasting again 40 days with intercessory prayers, Moses received the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, and he then became the renewed leader of the people of the covenant. Small number three. The Israelites lived in the wilderness for 40 years. Numbers 14, verse 34 records, According to the number of days which you spied out the land, 40 days, for every day you shall bear your guilt a year, even 40 years, and you shall know my opposition. The Israelites also trained in the wilderness for 40 years to begin a new life in the land of Canaan. Small number four. Elijah took 40 days to reach Horeb, the mountain of God. First Kings 19 verse eight says, so he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Elisha walked for 40 days and then was born again for his new mission. Small number five. Jesus fasted for 40 days before he was tested by Satan. This is recorded in Matthew 4, verses 1 through 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. After his 40 day fast, Jesus overcame Satan's temptations and began his public ministry. And small number six, the period from Jesus's resurrection to the time of his ascension was also 40 days. Acts 1 verse 3 records, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. After Jesus resurrected, he trained his disciples for 40 days, renewing their spirits for the new mission ahead of them. Knowing this, how should we take on Lent this year? A true work of repentance and renewal must take place in our lives as we break away from our ties to this fallen world and prepare to move on to our new stage of faith by earnestly and sincerely repenting of our sins. Ezekiel 18.31 records the following. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed. This is the work of repentance. And make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. This is the work of renewal.
The only official time of the year that allows for this 40 days of training is Lent. Like our forefathers of faith, I believe that we will experience amazing life changes as we fully endure and complete our coming 40 days of training. Every year in commemorating Lent, we practice abstention from eating meat and drinking alcohol, refraining from marital relations, and we exclude so ourselves from social ac activities such as weddings, birthdays, and parties. And let us also fast for at least one meal during this time, and if you can, one day. I sincerely pray you will receive many blessings for your afflictions that you endure on behalf of Christ's name. And during this time of Lent, we will once again participate in the Giving Up program. Please be sure to abstain from one or more of your favorite hobbies or activities, and also put on your list an activity you can do in faith, such as reading the Bible more, or reading the history of redemption books more, and praying more. Let us progress our faith in doing these activities during this time of Lent. In the name of the Lord, I sincerely pray that Lent this year will be even more holy and consecrated and that you will experience a true renewal of faith, health, possessions, and life. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. And big number two, we must keep the Feast of Lent, but in the spirit of the Passover. Lent is connected to the Passover, one of the three major feasts of Israel. At Passover, there are three foods that must be eaten. What are they? They are lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. Exodus 12, verses 6 through 8 record, And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight, Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and all the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Passover, in essence, meant you were leaving behind the worldly life lived in Egypt through repentance and moving on to a new life of faith. This is the spirit of Lent, repentance and renewal. Thus, the three foods that were to be eaten at Passover were symbolic of this, and today it shows us the three things we need in order to keep Lent properly. First, the meat of the Passover lamb. The meat that was eaten at Passover shows us that Lent is the feast that puts Jesus at the focus and center of our lives and heart, as Jesus is our Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Clean out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, has also has been sacrificed. Secondly, unleavened bread was eaten. It tells us that Lent is the feast in which we actively take in the word of God, which does not contain any trace of leaven or sin. 1 Corinthians 5, 8 records, Let us therefore celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth.
the unleavened and pure bread is the word of God. And God is telling us to eat this pure bread of the word during this time of Lent. And lastly, the bitter herb. In Greek, it is meror. It means bitter thing or bitter herb. Lament Lamentations 3, verses 15 through 16 records, He has filled me with bitterness, which is maror. He has made me drink wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. This is talking about sin. The sin is a bitter thing, and we must repent of it. And in Lamentations 3, verse 40, the Bible records, Let us examine and probe our ways, and let us return to the Lord. This is the work of Maror, the work of the bitter herb. In other words, bitter herbs indicate that Lent is the season of bitter repentance to rid the sins within us. Just as the Israelites kept their first Passover with the determination to escape their bitter 400 year lives of slavery, at this time with a firm belief, may we also completely escape the bondage of sin in this world when we begin our time of Lent. When we do this, I believe that the amazing progression of faith in our history of redemption will surely advance and be restored through this Lent. We will be able to have an amazing faith restored in our lives. Please believe in this. This is the conclusion of the word today. Through this time of Lent, I pray that everyone will experience the power of the cross. A Lent without the cross is not a Lent at all. We must be born again as true people of the cross, not only knowing the Jesus that we heard about, but also the cross that he carried for us. We must definitely understand what the cross means during this time of Lent. Who is the representative person who followed the life of the cross? It is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul made the following confessions. These confessions are found in the following verses. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the word of the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2 records, For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and, in, and him crucified. This is what Paul confessed. And in Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Galatians 5.24 confesses, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And in Galatians 6.14, the Bible records, but may it never be that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, in Colossians 2, verse 15, Apostle Paul confesses, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumph, triumphing over them by the cross. These are all confessions of the Apostle Paul. Through this time of Lent, I sincerely pray in the name of the Lord that we may all be able to confess that the sufferings and afflictions of the cross are also our experiences and confessions. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord.
Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, we are not even worthy as dust in this world. And our loving Father God, you have sent us your only son, Jesus Christ, to be nailed and to die on the cross. At this time, we understand and we thank you for the enduring love that you have for all of us. And this Wednesday, we will begin our first day of Lent. May we be able to take, away, to take off all our sins and all our desires of this world. May we only carry the afflictions of Christ within our lives. May we only remember you and your sufferings that you had sacrificed for us. Not only for us, but also for our families. You have died for us. And for this, we pray that we will commemorate you by keeping the Holy Lent. And on the day that you resurrect, may we and our families and the people around us, may we all resurrect with you on that holy day of resurrection. With this word of the Lent today, we are beginning a new week. May we be able to avoid and overcome the sins of this world. And just like Apostle Paul, may we confess that we only have the cross, that we may we only boast of the cross. And during these 40 days of Lent, may we have the victory of the cross in our lives. We believe this will happen, and we pray in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us give glory to God. At the time, let us all sing hymn number 138. Man, Wang, Wang, Ne, Ju, Ke, So, We, Go, Cho, Tang, Hen, Na, I, Bolle, Gat, Un, Nal, We, He, Ke, Bo, Hyar, Hul, Yon, Ne, Sip, Ja, Ga, Sip, Ja, Ga, Ne, Ga, Cho, Un, Bol, Te, Ye, Na, Ye, Ma, Me, Kun, Go, Tong, Sa, Ra, Jo, 오늘 믿고서 내눈 밝았네 참내 기쁨 영원하도다 주 십자가 못 박힘은 속죄함만인가 그 극률함과 그는해 말할 수 없도다 십자가 십자가 내가 처음 볼 때에 나의 맘에 큰 고통 사라져 오늘 믿고서 내눈 밝았네 참내 기쁨 영원하도다 늘 울어도 그 그눈에 다 갚을 수 없네 나 주님께 몸 바쳐서 주의 일 힘쓰리 십자가 십자가 내가 처음 볼 때에 나의 맘에 큰 고통 사라져 오늘 믿고서 내눈 밝았네 참내 기쁨 영원하도다 At this time, let us pray for the offering. Dear loving Father God, we thank you so much. On this February 14th, on this Lord's Day uh, morning, you've allowed our families to gather here before you in this time of worship, filled with spirit and in truth, to be able to glorify you. We thank you. Starting from this Wednesday, we are beginning our Lent. And more so than any other time, this is a time where we are able to redirect our hearts, our focus, and to be able to remember 
the severe suffering of Jesus Christ. In a time where we don't uh, plunge ourselves under all the sins of the world, but to be able to walk a godly life, that godly walk standing by right, uh, right beside you. May our saints be able to make that dedication, that kind of conviction, to be able to live by you. And may they all partake of the grace of your blessings of eternal life. With hearts of thanksgiving, we desire to give you these offerings of, uh, for the grace that we have received. These are offerings given with all of our hearts and our minds. And to all of these offerings that are given with, uh, with our hearts like this, may you, be, may you respond with your overflowing blessings and your grace upon us. We thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
ministry has given us this precious praise. Now it's time for announcements. Like before, starting from this Wednesday, it begins our time of Lent. And we are in the midst of this difficult times of the coronavirus. But during these times, we put in more efforts to be more godly, more holy. And when we hold on to God in prayer like this, I believe that there will be a time of power during this Lent where uh, this coronavirus will be eradicated, especially for our saints. During this time of Lent, may we, uh, I ask that uh, well, at least we are, we are able to uh, fast for one meal, or at least for one, uh, you know, for one day. And when we are able to fast like this, we will literally be able to experience the sufferings of Christ. If you read the Bible, Jesus took on our sins. And especially during the time of Passion Week, he was really unable to properly eat a meal, to drink one drink. And he was so, uh, he experienced so much suffering from the crowds. So in remembrance of this, in remembrance of the suffering that he endured for us, may we all fast at least just one meal. And even for our children of faith, I hope that you can also participate. And during this time of Lent, we're having this time of giving up program where, you know, the, there's things that we enjoy in our, you know, daily lives. Whether it's, you know, these hobbies or foods that we like, we abstain from these things. And fill in those times, those slots, with uh, more godly deeds to be able to have this maintenance of our faiths, reading the word of the Bible, to pray to God. And I believe that God will really accept this time of our Lent gl gladly. Please rise, let us all sing hymn number six and end our Lord's Day with benediction. Chanyang song song ja song yong samil che shin ke yong se mugung hagi ka chi yong wang el do li se yong Today, many people have given you these offerings of tithes and offerings of thanks. These offerings that contain their various prayer requests. Lord, may you take these offerings and also accept their hearts. And in each and every one of our families, 
May there be nothing lacking. May you allow these blessings. And now, with the limitless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of our Father God, the inspiration, the fellowship, and the filling work of the Holy Spirit be upon all those here today. During the 40 days of Lent, may we fully partake of the sufferings of Christ. May this blessing be upon our heads, our families, our business place, our schools, our office place, our church, our nation, and our peoples, from now until eternity. Amen. Our Lord's service is ended. I hope that you may have another week of peace. Thank you.